what it is, what it do, Cyber World. It is your girl, the one, the only, Ash Brown, and this is the Ash Said It Show. I appreciate all of you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,800 episodes, half a million streams, and 100,000 downloads. Thank you so, so very much. Makes a huge, huge difference. Today, we have a guest with us who, I mean, resume really precedes him, all right? He is a pastor, he's a doctor, he's a therapist, and he is also the author of the new book, The Bridge Between Us, Becoming One in Marriage, Dr. Rick D. Merritt. Hey, Dr. Rick. Hey, hello. (laughs) How you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us. So, Dr. Rick, I know that the world is still kind of spinning from this whole pandemic thing that's happened to us, and we're still trying to figure some things out. So I want to go back to the beginning. Where did the inspiration for this book actually come from? Well, the inspiration for this book uh, really came from um, me acknowledging some things that were not the way I desired in my own personal marriage. Mm. And uh, that was pretty revelatory, to say the least, being a doctor, being a pastor for over 30 years, being uh, married for over, well, next, well, this month, actually this Friday would be 39 years being married. Oh, wow, congratulations. And, yeah, and so, but, you know, what I found out is that there was a lot of things that were functioning inside of me that was unhealthy for the relationship. Mm. And... And when um, I began to hit walls again and again, and I uh, wanted, wanted to have answers in theology and things in, in church, mm-hmm. things of that nature that should have brought a balance to my thinking that helped me out, didn't necessarily give me what I needed as far as tools. Mm-hmm. And so it, it, it was only when I went to school um, to uh, learn and give myself the psychology and understanding the psyche of the mind that I realized that there was something happening inside of me that needs to be different in the way that I function. And mm-hmm. all of that was related to what I saw, what I heard, what was put in me growing up and different things I experienced. And so I began to search and in that searching, I began to get answers that were contrary to some of the things I already thought I knew. Mm-hmm. And long story short, people asking me to come as I began to share with my pastor friends and different denominations and different fellowships that I was associated with and affiliated with through relationships and ties. Uh, after going on different tours, I guess, and uh, speaking and talking about the things that I was learning personally and putting those things into practice, I saw that they worked. And lo and behold, friends said, look, you ought to put this in a book. My wife said, you ought to put that in the book. My, my children said, you ought to put that in the book. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, that, and really, that's what brought the book about. Uh, pain mm. brought the book about. Yes. Not, 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 not winning brought that book about. Yeah. <laughs> losing, too, losing too often. Yes. So how long did it take you to actually complete the book? Well, this is embarrassing. Uh, I, I was hoping you didn't ask that question, but I knew you would. Um, <laughs> it took, if I were to be honest and, and put everything together, it took it took seven years to put this book together. Yeah, but I mean, that's seven years of life experiences and, you know, nothing comes before it's time, Pastor. You know, so... Well, yeah, you put you, eh? put you to the choir, I get it. Eh? <laughs> so, you know, those seven years that you put into this book, I know that there are other people that have multiple books inside of them. They didn't spend those seven years past and put this book out there on Amazon. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate I appreciate your kindness there. Uh, the book is, is the project to me, and I surrendered this in my heart and my spirit years ago. Uh, this book really is not about what um, Pastor uh, Dr. Rick Mary has learned and and wants to share. This book really is about what God has done in me, and I feel compelled to share it. This is God promoting this book. This book is supposed to be a tool, and that's how I want it to be. That's and that's how I surrendered it in my in my mind and heart to be a tool that would help navigate through uh, struggles and, and pain and and, and 
and, and dysfunctionality so that we can come out of some things that really sometimes feel like I can't come out of hurt lockers mm. that you get locked into. Hopefully you can come out of. Yes. What would you say has been your moment of confirmation after the completion of this book? Like, was there someone that came up to you? Was it an email that you got? What would you say was that moment for you? But for me, um, it was when I sent the book to several of my pastor friends after it came out. And I, I really wasn't expecting anything other than, hey, I will read it when I get around to it. Mm-hmm. And um, several several of them uh, with, with, with congregations, uh, pretty large, wrote back and said, hey, how do I get X number of these books? Dude, this is an excellent tool for couples in my church. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. That, that that was, and so I didn't get that just from one or two. I got that from several pastors that I sent the book to. Mm. And I wasn't expecting to get that type of uh, feedback. I, mm. I was I was being obedient in writing the book, right. not really having an expectation of a success of sales more than I was just hoping that it would be something that could be used to help couples navigate through their dysfunctionality and their disappointments and their struggles in their relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that moment for me was the emails, the texts, the calls. And then once the uh, book went, went to Amazon and it got out there, a number of people who, who've been knowing me for years were reviewing the book on Amazon and sending me uh, emails saying how great the book was and how it's helped them and what has made a di- how it made a different. The light went on, mm-hmm. and uh, I can see what's been happening, what I what I've been doing wrong, how I've been misinterpreting my spouse, and so forth and so on. Those are the things that really confirm that this was something that God wanted me to do. Mm. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, Pastor, Doctor, Doctor Rick. I don't know. You got so many titles. I don't know which one to pick from. But um, <laughs> I <laughs> I know uh, I, I have a number of close friends and, and colleagues and a lot of people that I just know that are currently going through a divorce. And, you know, the pandemic is still ongoing. We're still dealing with stuff. What words of wisdom or what advice would you offer to couples today that need help healing on their marriage? Well, um, the thing that I've um, learned in counseling and um, pastoring and being married is that we seldom take the time to understand who we are in the relationship. Mm -hmm. We are often triggered in our hearts and minds over disappointments, letdowns, and failures of our spouse, uh, of circumstantial things that sometimes are not even brought on by anyone's decision or choice, but life itself happens. Mm -hmm. And we stop trying to become the best person that we can be, period. Everything centers now around the relationship. And people say, well, I have this, I don't, I don't have a good marriage. And I help them understand marriage in itself is not good or bad. Mm-hmm. It's who we are in marriage that determines whether it's a good or bad marriage. Mm-hmm. The first chapter of my book is, 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 uh, is called Building Sound Bridges. And it deals with the soundness of who you are as an individual. The thing that I learned uh, that helped me navigate through my dysfunctionality and my insecurities in my personal life that was affecting my marriage was learning how to see myself through my wife's eyes. Mm. Looking at myself through her eyes instead of looking at myself or viewing everything from my perspective, but seeing it from her eyes. And it was it was amazing when I began to see myself through her eyes, when I began to ask the, ask the honest questions about how, how do you see me honestly? Mm. I never will forget the moment that I uh, 
kind of unveil myself in front of my wife uh, because men don't like to do that. We we like to keep on our capes and have our superhero uh, macho attitude out front. But something was it was in a moment where I was uh, I had several things going on in the week and I was going I was about to speak in a conference a major conference in front of thousands of people and it was freaking me out and I wasn't and it's an and that whole week in our marriage has just been kind of like trying. You know, it, it wasn't nothing super hard or bad, just emotionally trying. And um, my wife, being the cheerleader that she normally is, she, she, I think that's, m- most wives take that role. Yeah. Um, she goes, oh, you got this, you got this. And at that moment, everything in my heart, I wanted so badly for her to know who I am, yeah. not who she perceives me to be. Mm-hmm. And when I told her that, I said, hey, look, I'm not going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I am the 10-year-old kid with insecurities that is about to fall apart into a million pieces right now. Mm-hmm. I really need a wife. <laughs> <laughs> really need someone who understands me, not a cheerleader. And when we sat and talked after, after the event and we talked about that conversation, it revolutionized everything about our relationship. Because she learned vulnerabilities about me that I never spoke of, never talked about. And she began to see me through the phases of my life instead of the moment that I'm in. That helped her be a partner and be a friend. And so I think the pandemic has really isolated couples Mm -hmm. because we're not comfortable being real, real close all the time. We Mm -hmm. said we are, we said we're in love and we say I love you, but we we like our space and our freedom. You know, being at work and being away and doing things and, and being going about our business has given us the opportunity to come together in our day and go, oh, it's good to see you. Mm-hmm. And that's not what we're saying with our mouth, but that's what we're saying with our attitude. Mm-hmm. But the pandemic has brought, er- has brought everything so close and jammed in to now there's no space for you to just relax to be you and not be criticized or not be critiqued or not be questioned. And uh, we get uncomfortable with those things. And I, I think just the up close and personal aspect of the pandemic has brought out some insecurities and brought out hidden things that we were not ready to share or not ready to expose or not ready to deal with. And I think that when we're honest about who we are and we're able to be comfortable with who we are and not have to feel uh, like we have to perform in a relationship, um, things were things would get better. Be honest, and I, I wish we had a little more time for me to get into detail about these things because in the book, I really do highlight the different phases in the seasons of of any relationship, not just marriage. Whether you're in either a parent or you are a, a, a child or you are a uh, a brother or sister or, or your work coworker. All, all those dynamics really do uh, play out in who I am. I bring myself to every relationship I am. I bring who I am. So if I'm broken, I bring my brokenness. If I'm, if I'm uh, traumatized and I'm, and I'm still having, having processed all those dynamics, then I bring that into every relationship. I'm hiding oftentimes in plain sight, hoping you really never see who I am. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I want to give... A very special shout out to Mrs. Merritt, your beautiful wife. And I want to say a congratulations to 39 plus years of marriage together. That is amazing. One like myself could only wish <laughs> for something like that. So that's amazing. That is amazing and just beautiful. I absolutely love it. Yeah, well, she deserves, she deserves all those accolades. She really does. <laughs> Certainly. You guys, the book is The Bridge Between Us, Becoming One in Marriage. It is now available. Dr. Merritt, thank you so much for coming through. Definitely appreciate your energy, your spirit, all those good vibrations. I know there are many, many people that tune into the show that needed to hear those words from you. So I appreciate you so, so very much. Um, Oh, great. Yeah, definitely. Let everyone know, uh, again, what's the best way to get the book? Okay, so you can get the book at, uh, at Amazon and just go there and, and uh, look for The Bridge Between Us. Um, and you can get it at uh, also Barnes & Noble. You can order it. You can, you can order it even at Walmart, 
Target, most of the main uh, box store outlets carry the book. And so um, the book is on sale right now at Amazon for uh, $13.49 or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, It just went on sale this month. And so I think it has to do with summertime coming up and and, uh, June being uh, one of the uh, uh, big uh, anniversary uh, Mm -hmm. months of the year for most marriages and things of that nature. Uh, and so you can also uh, you can follow me on uh, Real Talk, Real Talk uh, on scene with Dr. Rick Merritt, and you can also uh, find me on drrickmerritt.com, and uh, you can see I'm on YouTube. I do a thing, uh, I do a little uh, uh, a little thing I do on uh, Real uh, Real Talk with Dr. Rick Merritt that addresses a number of things uh, concerning relationships and marriage and things of that nature. Uh, and I do that every uh, two weeks, and so you can go there and you can download those and see those on YouTube as well. And so check me out and uh, and give me give me your feedback on some things because I'm looking for I'm looking uh, I'm trying to uh, I'm not really a social media person. I got every I, I got like five people trying to help me out to be on on board with this stuff. So definitely no, it, it, it it'll come together as long as they know that to check out the website they'll be able to find you. <laughs> We'll certainly be able to. But I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for all of your love and support. Keeping in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do. You look them square in the face. You tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for, the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys.